Hey everybody, it's Don Fishback, and I, why do I have a smile on my face? Um, the market, sometimes things just are so crazy, it just, you got nothing to do but laugh. Um, all right, so the market just hit a circuit breaker, and an intraday circuit breaker. It's hit the circuit breakers overnight quite frequently. Is this the first, is this the first circuit breaker we've hit during the trading day over these last few days? Yeah, we've actually hit some. Um, so this is, uh, just to give you some perspective, we, prior to yesterday, we've had, we had six straight days where the stock market made a move of up or down of more than 4%. So that was prior to yesterday. It had only done that once in 1929. Yesterday was the seventh day and today's looking like it might be the eighth day. So that, now think about this. I've got, and if you look at some of the other videos I've got, the one that I posted, I posted one yesterday. The, I've got 120 years of history of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It had never moved up or down 4% ever in its history for six straight days, or for seven straight days. It had done it for six, but not seven and it did it yesterday, and it looks like it's gonna do it again today. But, you know, the circuit breakers got hit and sort of slowed things down. And Terry, what's it down now? Uh, right at 1930. Down 1930? Okay. Well, if things continue, it's gonna be just like before. And that brought up a question in the office from somebody who hasn't been around here, and he's, you talk about getting baptized by fire. Um, Brian asked the question, what is a circuit breaker? So I thought I'd want to answer the question. Oh, you, we, you actually knew what a circuit breaker was because you've but been here for the, the, but what's the purpose of a circuit breaker? So I'm going to answer two questions. So the circuit breaker is that's a vestige from uh, the crash of 1987 where you had algorithms and, you know, we know there's high frequency algorithms in the market right now. Well, guess what? They had them back then. And you had this algorithm called portfolio insurance that it just it, it ended up backfiring and it's what caused a downturn in the market to turn in, into a catastrophe. You got, so the authorities said we're going to launch circuit breakers and stop those algos from uh, causing a, a, a decline, magnifying a one day decline. And in 1997, the circuit breakers got hit Twice that day, um, there was a guy that was trading huge, huge contracts of S&P futures. He got caught the wrong way, and it ended up liquidating his fund. And as they were liquidating his long futures positions, it was causing a cascade down, and that's what caused the circuit breakers to get hit. And what happened, as soon as they reopened the market, it's like, oh my gosh, they're going to close the market again in if, if it keeps going. And so everybody rushed to sell again and it hit the second circuit breaker and then the market, I think it was done for trading for that day. Anyway, the intent of the circuit breakers is something that actually comes from the futures industry where you have these lock limits. I mean, so limit trading has been widely accepted in futures trading and they said, well, we're going to adopt that into the stock market. And the purpose is to give people a chance to calm down, but also get their computers to stop. And that's when you have all this algorithmic trading, you're, you're seeing, and I'll just give you a perfect example. Let's say you have an algorithm that says if the stock market goes down more than 5%, buy puts. Well, that sounds logical, right? It's like, you know, the market's going down. I want to buy some protective puts. Well, when you buy a put, that gives you the right to sell, right? You buy a put, it gives you the right to sell at the strike, and it gives the seller of the put the obligation to buy. So the put seller that you're buying the put from, the put seller is basically has to hedge against the possibility of getting that long, that long position. So what they'll do is they will go short futures to hedge 
that pro the prospect of getting assigned on the short put position. And so, because they just don't, they're there to make a market. They are not there to take a directional position in the option. They just want to make a market. So the 50 delta, they'll, you, you buy a put, they're now short the put, they could get long, assigned long, and so they'll go sh um, short futures. Well, when they go short futures, that pushes the futures price down. I mean, right? There's a lot of selling of the futures, so that pushes the price down. Well, the problem is that there is index arbitrage that you can do. You can then buy the futures at that lower price and sell stock, go short stock, and you get a guaranteed locked-in profit. And so they'll buy the they'll buy the future. So the futures get pushed down by the market makers. That the algo guys come in and say, okay, I want to buy the futures and sell the stock. So it lists the futures because they're buying it. But what's it do to the stocks? It pushes them down. And then the algo guys, oh gosh, the stock market just went down. I need to buy more puts. And so they buy more puts. The market maker says, oh my gosh, I've got to sell futures to hedge my increasing put sales I'm making. So they sell futures and it pushes the futures down. And then guess what? The index arbitrage guys come in, they buy the futures, they sell the stocks, it pushes it down. And then it's like, oh my gosh, I got to sell, I got to buy more puts. So that's the cascade that can happen. And the circuit breakers say, no, no, you're done. You can't, it's time out. And it really is, it's a time out. And so that's what's going on. And the purpose is to break that algorithmic selling. And it's also to say, you know what? All you people that are panicked right now, just take a chill pill for 15 minutes. You can get, after you've had 15 minutes to cool off, you can come back. And hopefully the people that have programmed those algorithms will say, you know what? We need to turn that algo off. It's not working the way we had hoped it would. So that's what's going on. And that's why they have circuit breakers. Now, did I answer your question adequately? Yeah, what's the purpose of them? Okay, all right. So there's a couple of more questions that we've gotten lately, and I've, or actually there's some rumors that we've uh, uncovered from some of the people that I know in the business, and it has to do with, uh, okay, um, there's liquidity. You, you know that I've been talking about liquidity quite a bit, and that that has been a concern of mine if you've been reading any of my writing in the newsletters, I've been talking about the lack of liquidity and how the Dodd-Frank rule uh, created an unintended consequence of forcing the market making activities away from the banks and towards the uh, trading firms, the algorithmic trading firms. Well, think about where the bailout, I mean, they're talking about the Fed, the Federal Reserve, is saying, we're going to cut rates to zero. Well, who are they cutting the rates for? For you, for you, for you. No, they're cutting the rates for the banks. So the banks are getting this big discount in the money, and the Fed is also supplying money to the banks. Well, the market-making firms, and I don't know if anybody remembers, I remember the 1987 crash very vividly, and... You had all that selling and you had market makers back then. They were called specialists and those specialists were getting crushed because everybody wanted to sell and they were buying. So they're buying and the market's going like this. So the specialist at the end of the day in 1987, I mean, they were basically broke. And what ended up happening, they were supposed to, you know, when the, the trading day is over, they're supposed to send a check to the clearing corporation, depository trust clearing corporation, supposed to send a check. And they didn't have, well, they could have written a check, I guess, but it would have bounced. And so that's when the Fed came in and said, just lend them any money you can. Well, in Chicago, there's some, there are some market making firms that are undergoing some serious stress in all the, with, and it's mostly options market makers. And they need those banks, the banks that are 
in this current day are getting 0% interest from the Fed, they want the, the market making firms is like, hey, how about spreading some of that love around to us? So it, the good news is nobody's failed and things are still clearing, but it's gotten to the point that the market making firms really need a break, that the same type of break that the banks are getting. And that brings up um, one other thing I wanted to mention, and this is something that uh, something else that I've heard is that one of the biggest, biggest, in fact, it is the biggest hedge fund on the planet in, in Bridgewater, uh, they had a really bad month so far. From what, and you, it's in the news, it's not, it's not a surprise to anybody, they're down 20% on the year. So they're down 20%. And these guys are usually at the top of the game. They got caught flat-footed. And from what we hear is we're starting to see some redemption activity. And when you start seeing a $160 billion hedge fund that might have some leverage positions on, when you start seeing that kind of uh, forced liquid where people are saying, I want my money back, and they well, they've got no choice but to start liquidating stuff. And so what we may be seeing right now is the kind of liquidation that we've seen in other events like this, uh, long-term capital management. When that thing blew up, it just took the market down real hard and had a huge volatility spike. So anyway, that's um, maybe what we're seeing. And I, I've heard that there are some redemption requests going on that are substantial pretty substantial and that might be the reason why we're seeing some of this force it's it's forced selling it literally is forced selling so um, you know liquidation liquidity and then uh, the circuit breakers it's a really unpleasant subject I know it's unpleasant for a lot of you um, but it is it, it is what it is so any other quick does anybody have any other questions um, we had a caller, Ted from California. He wanted to ask a question. He said um, he knew that like two weeks ago exactly today, your three number system daily got you out of the market on your um, yes, investments and wants to know what's it going to take for you to get back in. Okay, so that's our three pillars service. Um, well, it's not the service, it's the three pillars daily system that we use. and. So there's three reasons why we, uh, this system said, get out of everything. And one, the pillar one is the yield curve. And that's bullish right now. It's still bullish. Uh, it's getting more bullish, by the way, because the Fed has pushed down short rates and all this, this fiscal stimulus that the governments are talking about is creating, it, the, the thought is it's going to create an absolutely gigantic supply of long-term rates. And that, so that's actually push, or long-term bonds. That supply is pushing up the long-term rates. So the yield curve is actually doing what we need it to do to get healthy. It inverted for a little bit last year, um, just for a couple of weeks, but now it's really starting to expand out. So the yield curve is one thing. The other two parts are sentiment. We look at sentiment to determine whether or not stocks are fairly valued. And then the other one is deflation. Both of those are negative. What, I mean, I got the shock of the morning, uh, this morning, when I looked at investors' intelligence data, which is some, that's one, one of the things I look at for the sentiment. And newsletter writers, in aggregate, at the end of the week last week, and he tracks, I think, about 140, 160 newsletters. In aggregate, in aggregate, there were more, there, I couldn't believe it, there were more bulls than bears. More bullish investors than bearish investors. What is right? I mean, that's, that is, I was totally shocked. I was expecting more bears than bulls after what we've seen, and that that actually would be a good thing because more, you've gotten all the excessive optimism out of the system. It's not done yet. So that's, I need to see that. I need to see investors' intelligence, more bears than bulls. 
And then the other one is, and you've heard me say this, if you've watched these videos before, you've heard me say it over and over and over again. The thing that has me petrified is crude oil below 24 bucks. I mean, we're going to be seeing gasoline prices here locally. Well, what did I say? The uh, What was the pre-tax? We thought it would go to sixty. Yeah, it'll probably be $1.72 this morning. $1.72? Yeah. I think it's going to be a buck fifty. Um, if it gets down to twenty, we'll see a buck thirty-five. That was the the last time it was there was nine eleven, right at November nine eleven, or November two thousand one, right after nine eleven. Um, so I need to see commodities stabilize. I need to see commodities stabilize, and what I'd really like to see is what we got in the last week of G uh, December 2018, first week of January 2019, where you got one of these launches, and it's called a breadth thrust. It's something, and you all know I've talked about Marty Zweig, it's an extremely reliable indicator that uh, sh uh, caught the launch in 1982 and caught the launch just like just about uh, 14 months ago. So anyway, I want to see a breadth thrust. I want to see I want to see VIX stop going up. I want to see crude oil find a floor. That's going to be probably the biggest thing. So those are the things that I'm looking at, and um, it would be nice to see what we call a news reversal, where you get some bad news, and the market just says, I don't care how bad it is. I've already got it priced in. I'm going up because I can see I can see the turn. Anyway, that's it. I want to thank everybody for watching. Be sure to, you know, the, the whole thing. Subscribe. Let us know in the comments what you think. And be sure to ask questions in the comments. We watch those and we interact with them. So uh, just uh, you all hang in there.